Well, once more, you owe me for letting you sail around on me ship. But that's okay. I'm the kind of gal who can play the long game. Sometime in the future, I'll be in need of your services once more. You can pay me back then. All right, come on, you got a job to do. Live to save, golds to kill. Better get to it. That Bannon's a real siren if you ask me. Even after the beating he's taken. Bulging muscles, pretty yellow hair. I'd be willing to bet the barrel of his piece is longer than a ship's mast as well. If you be understanding me drift. It's a shame in all honesty that he's one of them foolish holy men. Though even that ain't so bad. <laughs> Lily Roth loves herself a challenge. Not much I can say about that raving monster. While he still breeds, it fares ill for all of us. There ain't no amount of ocean we can put between us and him that Katava won't see as simply an extra jug of wine in his cup. Welcome ye Taurieth! Smell that fresh land, Lubber air. Ain't nothing like the air in Theopolis, full of debauchery and pollution, hidden neath the garb of them holy Templars. Seems the place has changed a fair bit since last I were here. A lot more blood and entrails than what I remember. Well, best Lily and I stay here, where it be safe. You journey on ahead, matey. And see what blimey buggers you get to kill next. Say, you're not in the market for a new cutlass or anything, are you? Recently unlocked the Black Crest's old armory. Found a whole shite load of weaponry down there from another time. If you fancy it, be glad to show you my stock. See if there's anything in there you'd like to pick up. Chum. The prodigal returns. Have you brought with you a weapon to free us? The ravenous one has only grown more hungry since you left us, and I fear your efforts may be too little too late. Kitava has all but destroyed us here, and our poor departed Utula's cultists have taken hold of the city. There's little ground left to tread that won't cause the grasping claws of Hinekora to reach out and wring our pretty little necks. I see your eyes, Exile. You wonder why I am here instead of at the Overseer's Tower. I'll tell you the horrible truth. 
The tower has fallen to the infernal devices of Kitava. That witch, Violenta, is to blame. She lowered a secret ladder and led Kitava's cultists right to our very beds. Bannon and I barely escaped with our lives. Together, we cut through the hordes, but it was no use. They had us surrounded. Bannon created a distraction which allowed me to flee. When I last saw him, he was perched atop the rooftops, holding off our enemies, though how long he will last, I cannot say. If you are going that way, perhaps you can find him and return him to me. I have grown fond of that Templar. The fire of Namahu burns within his belly. It would not fare well for us in this war if that fire were lost. Remember, we do this for freedom. It is good to see that you survived, my friend. But then, you have fared far worse. The froth of a violent ocean should be no problem for you. While we have been absent, Ariath has become a necropolis, a swarm of Kitava's wretched servants. The situation looks more dire than I had first anticipated. Before we make our move, we must know what we are dealing with. I send you, Exile, as a scout, as the only scout that would stand a chance moving through the shifting forms of this nightmare. You must discover where Kitava resides. Only then can we issue our final blow. Goodbye.
You there! Exile! I am in need of your services once more. Help me! Phew. I would thank God for you, my friend, if that weren't too on the nose. I felt for sure that this time it was my turn to depart our world. Kitava's cultists surrounded Lani and I a while back. We split up and I led a distraction so she could make best her escape. Funny I really should have considered my own plan for evasion once I'd allowed her hers. In any case, it is good to see you again, Exile. Let us talk more in a safer space. Now that the Brian King is nothing but crab meat, his sunken domain, the ancient city of Sawatha is ripe for the plundering. My granddaddy once dedicated a good portion of his sailing life trying to hunt down the location of that monolithic city. Then, while he were otherwise indisposed, years truly tried to follow in his gnarled footsteps, track down the teardrop, a pearl as big as your head, carved with the clues to the city's subaquatic location. I was this close to completing my grandfather's legacy when those damn Templar privateers raided me ship and took off with the teardrop, threw it in their reliquary here in Theopolis. As it were, now's the perfect time to retrieve that dazzling pearl. Think you can nab it for me? I'll make it worth your while. Maybe tick it off the list of things you owe me. There was a time when the ladies would be begging for a bit of old whalem, but I ain't felt the warm caress of a woman in a long time, and it wounded me dreadful. During my time on the sea, I heard tale of Queen Etzeri, and her penchant for using this land as a kind of vault for all her special shinies. One such shiny be her famed love potion. Supposed to attract the drinker's ideal mate to their loins, even if that mate be far across the sea. Old Queen Etzeri get the liquid in the skull of her favorite lover. Them damn Templars probably got their hands on it by now, and the potion's bizarre container has me thinking. They probably went and tossed it into the ossuary along with the rest of the bones they got lying around. Exile. Be ye the friend I believe you to be, then find a potion for me, so that I can experience true love once more. Here are ways divide. Bannon is alive and well. In no small way, thanks to you, I would be willing to guess. Without him being here, I would have lost my sanity or my life a long time ago. Take this gift as a token of both our appreciation. Now that you have returned, and we have managed to sturdy ourselves once more abreast this mighty ship, I ask of you one more favor. Find that traitor Violenta and kill her. Though I wish to see her dead as revenge for her insurrection, Violenta has become something far worse under the radiation of Kitava's gaze. She must be stopped. Remember, we do this for freedom. Ah, 
Good to see you made it back. You look at me with suspicious eyes. Yes, I know you have your apprehensions about me and my new indwelling spirit. But if it helps a little, I feel innocence stirring inside me, awakening with an odd sense of gratitude towards you. It was, after all, your bite that returned him to humility, allowed the scales to drop from his eyes. If you are to go wandering the city in its current state, be careful where you step. Kitava's cultists are constantly on the prowl, actively seeking food for their god. What's worse, the passage to Kitava's feast is blocked off by two large black gates. We call them Kitava's horns, and they are utterly impenetrable to the motions of man. There is but one way in which we can reach Kitava and deprive him of his eternal meal. The Staff of Averius lies somewhere amongst the rubble of the Chamber of Innocence, still billowing with holy power. If you were to find it and return it to me, I believe the power in the Staff will act as power enough to break through the Horned Gates. Innocence forget Then it is as I feared. Kitava's strength has grown insurmountable in our absence, and his horns now deny us entry to his feeding trough. Evidently, the hungry god has grown picky about what crumbs now travel towards his burgeoning throat. It is this strength that concerns me. I have spoken with our friend Bannon over there, a willful vessel of my misguided brother. I knew eventually we would need to enlist my brother's services, though I had hoped we need not do so this soon. Yet, it seems that we have no other choice. We must invoke my dormant brother, slumbering within Bannon's frame. Kitava's horns are a thing of great corruption, which only innocence's purity can dispel. Before we proceed, I feel I must confide something in you. Bannon wishes me not to speak of it, as he is willing for the sacrifice. However, I feel you should know. Once we invoke innocence, once we dredge him up from his cocoon inside the soul of Bannon, the man shall cease to be. Only the god shall remain. Do you understand what I say, Exile? If we take this path, Bannon will die. Excruciatingly so. Burned with purity from the inside out. As I said, Bannon is willing to commit his life to this cause. But perhaps you should say your farewells before we move past the point of no return. Remember, humanity needs... Innocence blesses your journey.
is short. Deal with it.